In this video, we're going to dive in and explore the Tone Curve panel. So if we go up to our panel options at the top here, you'll notice that it's the second end from the left. If we click on it, you should see two different tabs, the first being parametric and the second being point. So these are your two curve editors. Now, they both have similar capabilities, although their usability is vastly different. And when choosing which one to use, your decision will primarily come down to two things. Uh, the ease of use or the precision and accuracy of your adjustments. So let's now dive in and take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of each. Now the parametric curve has a simple interface to allow for quick adjustments to your highlights, lights, darks and shadows. Now the effectiveness of each one of these controls is further enhanced by the range slider which is located at the bottom of the curve itself and you'll notice that there are three there. There's one at 25 one at level 50 and one at level 75. Now, the range sliders themselves allow you to be able to expand and contract the adjustments that you've made to the individual sliders that are below. Now, when making these adjustments, you need to learn to associate the highlights, lights, darks and shadows with its particular range slider. Now, if you don't, the range sliders won't actually work until you have actually entered a value into one of these sliders here. So, for example, if I was to go and actually make an adjustment to the range sliders at the moment, you'll notice nothing will actually happen. Uh, and that's primarily because they make adjustments to the values you enter into the highlights, lights, darks and shadows. So now if I just reset these back to where they were, Let's take a look at exactly what I'm talking about. So, to start off with, first you'll notice that the, the curve itself is broken up into 16 grids. Um, the easiest way to understand which one of these range sliders is associated to uh, which one of the actual adjustments below is to break up your grid into four columns, like so. So on the left hand side you have the shadows and that is primarily affected by the, um, the first slider from the left and the mid-tone slider. Next you have the darks, so this will be the darks column and that is only affected by the mid-tone slider. Next you have the lights, so this column, and that is only affected by the mid-tone slider. And finally, you have the highlights column, which is affected by the highlights slider and the mid-tone slider. So to give you an example of what I'm talking about, if I was to add um, dial in some values into the highlights, you'll notice up here that the actual uh, curve has been adjusted and changed. Now, if I was to grab the uh, range slider that is in between the uh, highlights and the lights, you'll notice that as I go across to the right, it pulls in that curve adjustment, and as I go across to the left, it pushes out that adjustment. Now, where I mentioned before, you can actually also use the mid-tone slider for uh, the highlights. As you can see here, it's making an adjustment to sort of the uh, lighter areas of your highlights and, and mid-tone areas. So that will also make an adjustment. Uh, the actual shadows, dark and mid-tone areas won't actually have any effect on the highlights whatsoever. Now in comparison, if we were to add an adjustment to the lights, for example, as you can see there, only the mid-tone slider will actually affect the adjustment. Uh, oh, sorry, only the mid-tone range slider will actually affect that adjustment um, by expanding and contracting the actual curve that you've set. It won't actually be affected by the highlights. As you can see here, when I move the uh, highlights range slider, nothing's happening, and it won't be affected when I move the shadows highlights. I mean, sorry, the shadows range slider, as you can see here. Um, so both the lights and the darks are the same. So because they're sitting in the actual uh, mid-tone range of the actual curve and histogram values that you can see here, they're only affected by the mid-tone slider. And finally, we have the, the shadows. The shadows themselves, they're actually going to be 
affected by uh, both the um, shadows range slider, as you can see here, expand and contract, and also the midtone slider once again here. And also you notice if you push the sliders across, they'll actually push each other, <laughs> which is quite funny. Um, so that's primarily the, the parametric um, curve. It's, it is quite useful if you're not sort of, sh um, if you've never used curves before and you're not quite sure how to make your adjustments to your image. It is actually quite limiting though, because you don't have as fine control as the point curve adjustment, which I'm about to get into now. But it is extremely quick if you did want to make uh, adjustments and you've just got to get used to using those range sliders and how they actually affect the values that you've entered into the highlights, lights, darks and shadows. The point curve editor works similar to curves in Photoshop except it doesn't have the option to work with individual color channels which isn't an issue considering the amount of control that we already have in Camera Raw. Now this curve provides far more control than that of the parametric curve due to its point precision nature. Now the first thing you're going to notice is the curve options. Uh, this is a drop down menu that provides three presets uh, along with a custom option. So to begin with you have linear which is an unedited version of uh, the curve, so it's just a straight diagonal line. You then have medium contrast, which provides a, a, a preset um, slight S curve, uh, and it's slightly increased the contrast in the image. We then have a strong contrast, which has increased the, the contrast once again, but it has a more distinct S curve. And then we have custom. Now custom will always show up whenever you start making adjustments to any of your curves. It'll automatically just default to it, and you actually have once you've actually added additional points or made adjustments to um, existing points on the curve itself. By placing points on the curve, you're able to change the density and contrast of any value in your image. Now to get a general idea of actually how curves works, if you've never actually used curves, if we were to create a basic S curve just by using one point, you'll notice as I increase that point, it increases the contrast. So as the, the S curve becomes more distinct, it increases, and if I go the opposite direction, it actually uh, decreases the contrast, as you can see there, which actually looks quite nice in this particular image. So that's sort of an easy sort of analogy of how um, curves works. Now, you're able to add up to 16 points on the curve itself. So it does give you a lot of control with a lot of the values in your image. And as you can see here, you've got, uh, it starts off at zero and it goes to 255 in value. You also notice you have an input and an output value. So this is the actual point where you've actually placed your, uh, this is the values where you've actually placed your point. So if you had a lot of adjustments on your curve and you're finding it difficult to actually get the values right, you could go in here and make adjustments to say, I want that to be, say, 15 and I want that to be 90. Uh, so you could actually do it that way to get even more precision with your edits. Now, if you want to remove uh, points from the curve after you've sort of started playing around and adding points, all you've got to do is grab the point and drag it off the curve and it will automatically remove it from the curve itself. So there you have it, parametric and point curves, each of which has its advantages and disadvantages. I personally prefer to use the point curve adjustment primarily because I was brought up using Photoshop curves and I enjoy the additional control that it provides. But at the end of the day, these are both very useful tools that should be considered when making density adjustments or contrast adjustments to your photographs.